They're going to do what you call interactive preaching. Because God has gifted him in many areas, most especially the teachings. Those who come on Friday evening, especially my big brother there, he always knock his head. But you see that certain things are deep that you can't hear. But except God reveals unto you, you can never find any book. It's a gift. I thank God. So today, I don't preach actually sermons, but I bring messages. Amen. So the one who sent me, he gave me a message for somebody who is ready to receive. If it is for you, say Amen. Amen. A theme has been given to the men's uh, week this week. And last Friday, God used Brother Frank and he projected us through a powerful word and prayer. In fact, when I was sitting down to take my notes, I said, Hey, this guy is talking to my apple. Because you can't sit and sit down unless you do certain things. I said, Hey, this guy is taking my word. Oh. Passing God, give me another one. Amen. 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 Lord, God, God, give me. God is a word of God is a, and His word are the same. You can't bypass God's word and see a word to God. It's never possible. Amen. So God has a word for you today. Our theme is man stand in the gap in our generation. It's taken from Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30. If somebody has the King James, please can you help me read it? Yes, please. And I sought for a man among them, and he should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land. And I should not destroy it, but I found none. Amen. That was the old King James. The new King James starts with, So I sought for a man. And what he said, he said, and I sought for him. And that means the sentence began from somewhere. So before you reach where you reached, God said, and so, that means something has taken place already. Amen. <coughs> Every time you are reading the Bible and you want to get a full understanding, don't read out of context. Read the whole text. So that when you reach where the emphasis is, you know why God said that. Let me throw this question ahead. God is omnipotent God. We all know that. He can do all things. Nobody can change God's mind. But have you asked yourself why he said he was looking for a man? That's a question. God can do all things. He can even open the ocean for people to walk through. But here he said, I'm looking for a man. Why is God looking for a man? Something took place. And any time you baffle yourself about one thing and you don't understand, I always say, Go back to Genesis. That's all where it all began. In this chapter 1, verse 26, the Bible said, And God said, Let us make man in our own image, and let them have dominion. Say, Dominion. 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 Say, I, I have, have dominion. dominion. Now, that dominion in Hebrew language is radar. Radar means to have power, to have rulership. To have leadership, to have authority, to have everything. So God, when God said, "Let us make," a, a, what about God? Is whenever He speaks, it becomes a law. When His word falls, He doesn't take His word back. Amen. Amen. So the moment God spoke these things out, dominion and power was given to you, man. Amen. Amen. So God did not say, "Let us have dominion." He said, "Let them." So God is not part of the dominion of your name. It's you. Okay? Alright. So the moment you receive the dominion, God did everything here for you to rule over. And God retracted from this statement that he made. Imagine you have four bedroom apartment. And I come to rent one. And I don't want you to collect your rent. Can you just pop into my room anyhow? Without knocking? Even though the house is yours? Why can't you do that? You have given me the authority to live there. Imagine the same way Psalm 115 verse 16 says, The heaven is the Lord's, and the earth he has given to the sons of men. So this earth is for me and you. It's not the Lord's anymore, it's for you and I. That's why Genesis said, Let them have dominion, let them rule. If you see yourself as an ordinary man, you will lose. You must see yourself as the king. You must see yourself as the ruler. You must see yourself as somebody who has power over everything. 
because God has already given it to you. When the Bible says man, it's not me, a macho man standing here. Man has a mystery behind it. If you read Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, God said, Let us make man in our own image, in our own likeness. But when you go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 5, the Bible says, So the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground. It's a confusion here. In Genesis chapter 1, God made, let's, let's create man. But when they come to two, we say he made man. What's the difference here? They created man and they made man. Did God make two man here? No. The word creates man, creates is bara in the Hebrew. Bara means making something out of nothing. You get me? And that is your spirit man. You are two in one. When you watch Genesis chapter 2, verse 5, he said he formed man out of the dust. And then he breathed into you. So you have two compositions. Your physical side and your spiritual side. So when we read Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, the Bible says, There was no rain here on earth. God did not cause it to rain. Why? There was no man to till the ground. There was nobody to work. So if the rain falls, the rain I want to spring up, nobody will be there to manage it. That tells me that. God made man was necessary. Your being here on earth was necessary to God. Otherwise, you wouldn't have made you. So, nobody is useless. No one is useless. Before God made man, he sat down and planned. I said, mm, I have to make man. Why? Because I've made everything already. But there's nobody taking care of it. So, you sitting there, the word human being that we have, it comes from two words. Humus means dirt. The dust that you were created. And ish is the Hebrew word for man. So you have heal man. But we don't pronounce the MUS. Otherwise, we say humus man. So your body that God gave you is very powerful weapon that you have. Your body. So the only thing that made you lay down here on earth is your body. So any spirit without a body is illegal. Amen. Amen. Are you following me here? Yes. They are going to arrive very soon at Ezekiel. Any spirit without this flesh is illegal, <coughs> including demons. <coughs> That's why demons can possess somebody and use a person to do things. And when, because we have the body, we have power and authority to dominion. You and I can cast out witchcraft. You and I can cast out dominion. Why? Uh, uh, demons. Why? Because they are illegal. They have no body, including the Holy Spirit himself. Say I lie. You don't lie. <laughs> Bible says your body is what? The temple of the and the Holy Spirit living in what? In you. So for God's spirit to operate on it, he needs a body. The same principle applies to Satanism. When they need somebody to use and uh, the person bring confusion, he enters into somebody's body, the humans, then they can operate. Why? God has already given the dominion power to you and me. Amen. Amen. So God who never bypasses where to do anything, he said, I am looking for a man who will stand in the gap. God could have sent angels from all but he didn't do it. Why? He had already said in Genesis that let them have what? Dominion. Because of God's will, he can never bypass it. Most of the times we look down upon people, those who are born out of wedlock. People think only those who their mothers and fathers produce them because they get wet. They are the supernatural human being. It is never true. Whether you are born in the wet lock, outside the lock, on top of the lock, beneath the lock, adjacent to the lock, opposite the lock, who cares? Your being here on earth is necessary to God. Me, me, my father cheated on his wife with my mom. Did I ask them to produce me? I don't care. Let them call me picking a bottle. It's none of my business. Because my being here on earth is necessary to God. And any time a man meets with a woman, more than 600,000 or million of sperms are released. And God was looking at one sperm and guess who it was? It was you. So your being here on earth is necessary to God. In fact, turn to your neighbor and tell him, if you know who I am, tell him, you will take me for lunch today. 
tell the one on the other side. If you know who I am, you will take me for lunch today. Amen. So you are important to God. The Bible says in the book of Amos, God will never do anything unless he has revealed to who? His prophet. And his prophet animals. I don't know human beings. But why would God do something and come and consult man first? After all, he is God, like I asked earlier on. But because of the dominion power where he spoke in Genesis chapter 1, verse 20, says, like what made you a nice supernatural human being on earth? As a matter of fact, if you read Genesis 5 2, the Bible says, God created man in his own image. Male and female created he them. And he called their name Adam. So, brothers and sisters, whether you were a woman or you were a man, you are all man. Amen. 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 God called Adam and Eve their name Adam. If you spell Adam, how many letters do you find? Four. A D A M. Let me ask you this question. That's why I said interactive with you, right? When God met Moses on the desert and asked me, God, if I go and he asked me, Where God sent me? What name should I say? What was God's answer? I am. I am. If you have a pen, write it down. I am. That means I am everything. Yeah. On earth, add am. He added the last two of his name to mankind, making you and I the God of this world. The earth is the earth, the humus, and am. It might be the same way when you go to heaven, the angels, all of them have God's name. Michael, Gabriel. Oh, there are about 12 of them. All of them have E-L. The E-L comes from Elohim. So, brother, he said, don't look down upon yourself. You are more than you think you are. If you know what he has invested in you, you start out every morning boldly and say, Ah, God made me his own image. If God is not timid, I am not timid. If God is not a coward, I am not a coward. If God is not broke, I am not broke. So, I refuse to be sick. I refuse to be broke. I mean, anything negative, I, I, don't, I don't want to hear those things. Amen. Amen. Because if you wake up at 5 o'clock and read your Bible, and you say, God, let this word I'm reading jump to me, God will reveal a bit of that word to you. You say, hey, certain times I read the Bible and say, are all these things in the Bible? But I read over it. I don't pay attention. Once one day, God says, don't God, take it one by one. And I begin to have a revelation of all what God was saying. Amen. 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 Let me continue. So, if God will not bypass his law to do anything, why is it that you and I, every day, we cry and we complain? And then God gave me a word. But rather, unfortunately, we couldn't have time for me to deliver. And Sister Patience was here. Sister Patience, yes? Yeah. No. It's not here today. Okay. It's me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, she was saying something, and I'm sick. I am not. I said, don't use those words. <laughs> in fact, God gave me a word this morning, and I told her face and said, well, that this word, so everybody needs to hear it. I said, well, the church has closed. You remember? Uh huh. And I'm going to tell you today. Anytime you use the word I, that's not, you begin with this. He said, every day, all of you here blaspheme my name. All of you. You insult me every day. You speak against me. I say, God, oh, how? How? Anytime you use I am, what are you calling? You are calling my name. Then you say, I am sick. I am broke. I am empty. I am depressed. I am mad. I am. You know you are insulting me? No. That's why I told you. Let the sick say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. God made you his image. So anytime you say I am, don't dare use any negative word. Amen. Even though it is the thing you see, say the opposite. Amen. Even though you are saying, I am strong, yes. but his stripes, I am me. Amen. You pull your wallet out, you see the request. This Christ is better, it's going to be converted into, into better money. Speak what you want to have out. Amen. Amen. I'm still on track. We are right very soon. That's just by the way. So, anytime God needs something to do, He consults man. Put this one down. If you like, write it in your notes or record it. 
and it goes like this. Without God, man can do nothing. And without man, God will do nothing. What did I say? Without God, man cannot. And without man, God will do nothing. You agree with me? Yes. Now, let's take some references. When God wanted to raise a nation called Israel, he went for Abraham. When he wanted to feed them, he went for a guy called Joseph. When he wanted to deliver this people from bondage, he went for a guy called Moses. Let me pause here. Moses was on the wilderness. God attracted his attention to the burning bush. He said, ah, I get this man. Moses, I have heard the cry of my people. And I have come. He read Exodus. He said, I have come to deliver them. Did God come? He didn't come. But I said, I have come to deliver them. Good, follow the story. But I can't do that. I am a spirit. I am a legal man. But you are human. You have the body. Therefore, you need to work with me in order to get this people out. And because Moses was a shanty boy, he was given excuses. God, I am a stammerer. I can't talk. You know, I'm not handsome. I can't put on time like the Andrews do. I can't dance the way. God says, shut up. I just need to do something. And I need humans to work with me. Yes. See, if you can't talk, I'll provide a talker for you. Aaron will talk for you. So if you read the whole of the Exodus, anything that Moses said, God confirmed it. Amen. 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 And when they went to the Red Sea, they saw the enemy coming. The Red Sea was in front of them. And Moses turned around and said, These people that you see today, you will not see them anymore. Amen. He said, God, did you hear what I tell them? God said, I said, I, I, I heard it. Good. So God had to breathe for the ocean to pass in the tomb. And they walk on the dry ground. But they read the other side. The sea wasn't just closing. And Pharaoh and the people were coming on the horses, chasing the Israelites still. And Moses said, God, the water isn't closing. So God said, I know. You have not given me any permission to close it. So the God, then close it. And God did what? He closed it. It's in the Bible, read it. So God will not do anything without man. That's why he said to Ezekiel, I sought for a man. He didn't say I sought for an angel. He was looking for a man. So before God can do something, he needs a man. Say, God need me. God need me. God need me. And to lament over Israel, God raised Jeremiah. To prophesy over his coming, he raised Isaiah. To teach them about wisdom, he raised Solomon. To establish a king on earth, he used uh, this boy called David. And also to raise up a family for himself, he raised up a woman called Mary. And to even bring the knowledge of Jesus Christ, he raised up a woman called Naomi. Say, Naomi, go back to your root. To raise up a woman who could stand in the gap to save the remnant of Israel, he raised a woman called Esther. So when the Bible says, I'm looking for a man, women don't think he's looking for a man like me. You are included. You get me so far? So without God, man cannot. And without man, God will not. Amen. Should I continue? Yes. And to bring his good news to the Gentiles, he raised up Apostle Paul. And you know what's funny here? To raise up somebody in your family who can make things right, he raised up you. Amen. Say, I have dominion. So whenever God is looking for a man, say, God, I am here. God should not bypass you and put any other because he made you in his own image. Let me reverse the tape a bit. Genesis chapter 1, 20 says, God created man. Genesis chapter 2, he made man. For me to know what kind of man that God created in Genesis chapter 1, I must know who God is. Right? When you go to you flip the pages to John chapter 4, verse 24, he said he was spoken to a woman on a well about worship. He said, A time is coming, and now is, that the true worshipers of God must because God is a spirit. Hallelujah. So you sitting there, you are the image that God made in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. You are the spirit man. So most of the time I hear people say, I have a spirit. You don't have a spirit, but you are. Experience and you have a body and you possess a soul. 
So whenever God is looking for a man to stand in the gap, God looks at these three things. And we have it. We have it. Don't ever subtract yourself from the equation. Your being here on earth is very, very necessary to God. And this planetary influence on earth was given to the humans, man, me and you. That means that there is nothing that God will do without us. You might feel inferior today. Rise up. In your prayer, tell the God. Moses was a, was a man like me. This guy, how do you call him? He's the one who prayed until the heavens shut down rain. He later. He later was a man like me. The Bible says in the book of James. He was a man like me and you. He could pray for the heaven to shut down for free and a half years without rain. Then you do whenever there is a drop in your pocket to sit down like that. Stand up and pray like a later date. The Bible says God is not a respecter of persons. He doesn't discriminate. So if he used Elijah to do mightier things, what about you? What about you? I have a question here. Whenever you pick, have, have somebody talked about why when he was about to pick the forbidden when God did not say anything? What is mighty? Hmm? He knows all things, right? It's like when you answer me this question. And then this slim lady called Eve. He was having interaction with the devil. What is it to everything? And she went ahead to pick up this food and what did not see anything. Why? If God had done that, he could have seen it seemed as a whole other castle. But God didn't see anything, he was just watching. Why? Who can answer me? Because of the dominion castle. But the moment God interfered himself, he has written his own law, and you and I can never trust him again. But glory be to his name that he is a faithful God. You can even equate the fact that God's faithfulness was as a result of the fall of man. So God has said, hey, stop it. I've told you not to touch it. If you say, oh, 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 Mr. God, take you. Wait a minute. Are you the one who gave out the dominion power? Why are you interfering my business? You understand? But because God has already spoken out, it has already become the law. So, the passage where we just went in Ezekiel, the land of Israel was going through turmoil. Many bad things were happening. A lot of things, things were happening. Bad things. The things we saw these days, the same things are happening those days. And God said to Elijah, I saw Ezekiel, we are looking for a man who will stand in that gap. Hmm? What should that man do? That man can pray and I will, I mean, stop whatever I want to stop. Because any time believers come together and we pray, we are giving the dominion power that he gave up to us in Genesis chapter 126 back to him and say, God, you are giving us this power, but we are powerless. Therefore, take this and do it for us. And God will do it. Let me give you one illustration. Once upon a time, he wanted to go and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm, you remember the story? He went to his friend called Abraham. He said, Abraham will say, Genesis chapter 25, he said, what should I do that I don't tell my friend Abraham? Abraham, my father to go and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Why? Because their sins have come to my face. They have sinned too much. Homosexuality, abortion, cleanliness, a whole lot of stuff. And I want to judge them. And Abraham said, Why are you coming to me? You are the God. You have the power. And God said, Yes. But you are a human. You have the authority. And Abraham said, okay, then let's make a deal. If you go there, you find 50 men, will you? This one is city. God said, no. What about 40? God said, no. What about 30? He said, Abraham, you are the man. You have the authority. I am the God. Keep dealing. What about 20, God? God said, I will not touch it. What about 10? God said, I told you. You are a human. You have the authority. I am the God with the power. Keep on dealing. Abraham said, what about five? God said, I wouldn't. Then he remembered his niece, uh, cousin, Lot, and the kids. They were four. He said, Lot, get away from Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm about to go give God his permission to destroy the country. So that means God will be never, never do anything for this earth without man. Brother, you are important to God. Don't belittle yourself. Don't think one or two things did not go well, so for that matter, you will, I mean, you join the towel. No. 
the moment that you begin to think that God said, ah, somebody I'll give you my dominion power to. Somebody that I want to use to do something. Look at what man is doing. It will bring God's heart. Never look them upon yourself. No matter how tough the going becomes, hold on to his word. For he has said that he will never ever bypass his word to do anything. And in fact, the moment his word comes, it will never return unto him for it unless it has accomplished any purpose for which he sent. Clap for the Lord. Now, let's look at the kind of man that God is looking for. In second chapter 22, we get to it. He said, I search for a man, search in the process of seek. Seek means to diligently search, looking through the face and takes with microscopic glasses, searching for the correct one. You are making an understood. Understood is what? Investigation. You are searching diligently. Because you don't want to use the wrong thing. You understand me here? So God said, I search for a man. So before God said, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm searching for a man, it means the land was too many people there. Whole nation is right. But God said, you wouldn't find none. It's triste. It's pathetic. It's never, it will never be a portion. That God will come here and say, I'm looking for somebody to do this, you'll find nobody. No, no, no. Amen. 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 That means God put some criteria down. Now he was looking for before that person can start in the gap. And number one is this. Are you ready? The man God seeks to start in the gap is the man whose God's grace has removed every hindrances from his ways. We have hindrances in our ways. Most of the times we can't pray. We know why we can't pray. We have grudges. Anytime I have reason with my wife in the house, I don't pray. But I know God won't hear me. I won't waste my time. Unless I make it right with him before the day I start praying. It's true. So any hindrance that is in your way, it takes God's grace to remove them from the Then you have a connection with him. God will not appoint you to stand in the gap for him while he cannot communicate with you. It can work. Another thing can be certain things in our life that you know and God knows they are not right. The way to desist from them is a contact with him and God and he can use you to fill in the gap. Amen. The second person that God is looking for is the one who places himself absolutely at God's disposal. You must be ready at all times. We are about now 50 adults here. But it's very sad when you come here on Friday evening to see about eight of us here. But we are before the television. We are watching the European Cups. I don't say don't watch me, don't take me wrong. But put priorities first. Are you at God's disposal? If God is looking for a man to stand in the gap, can you find the man who he comes here on Friday evening? Last time I said it and I repeat it. The size of every church is measured by the prayer group. And when you come on Friday evening, that's when you see how big the ministry is. It's not this old. No. After this, everybody can do it. If you party, even book lunches, you can have people like this. But when it comes to prayer evenings, where you are leaving your food there, say, oh, let me rush and go. Where you are leaving your nice television program, say, let me rush and go. There are Kukumba, there and those kind of things you watch. I know them. When you can buy them, but call them uh, uh, East Enders, uh, those things, the Facebook, uh, uh, the WhatsApps, the chats, leave them and be at God's disposal. Those are the people that God is looking for to stand in the gap. Hallelujah. Amen. The fourth one is this the one God sees is the man who has learned to prevail in prayer. The one God wants to stand in the gap is the one who can prevail in prayer. This man called Jacob, the Bible says he wrestled with the angel through the whole night until the next one. The angel said, Leave me, let me go because the one is about to pray. He said, If you don't bless me, I'll never let you go. This man persisted until God blessed him. And if here be the case, you wake up in the morning. Oh, Lord, I have to make my way to your head. I know you always do it. Thank you, God. What are you doing? I'm praying. You are not praying. You are talking. The person, let me give you a secret. Who has ever read the Bible and saw that Jesus prayed with his disciples before? Okay. I've said it here before, right? Jesus never 
I said it's already making. God, Jesus never told his disciples. Never. Why? The Bible says early in the morning, he go to a solitary place and pray. Early in the morning, he go to solitary, he pray. Always alone, always alone. Even one time, he prayed until the sweat became like blood. So one day, <laughs> the disciples wanted to take up a demon out of a body. Come out! I'll beat you! Come on! We can come to one time. Come on! I'll beat you! I can't see you! I can't do it! I'm tired! And I'm coming to go! They did the whole day, the demon could not come out. Jesus was somewhere laughing at them. Jesus came and said, Demon, what's the secret here? When we are struggling to solve issues with men, it takes hours. You know why? Before we spend one minute before God, we have to spend hours before man. Try the equation on. Turn the equation around. Spend hours with God, we spend seconds with man. It's with that are tough that you can't get a breakthrough. Because you have spent hours with your God, it becomes easy to tackle. Amen. The disciples want to say, God, he says, then teach us how to pray. He says, okay, I'll teach you. That's where we have our Father who wants to help you from. So the man who can stand in the gap is the one who can prevail in prayer. Amen. 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 Can I move on? Yes. Another point is, the man God is seeking for to stand in the gap is a man who is a student of his word. Timothy said, Learn to show yourself approved unto God, not unto me, unto God, as a white man who is not what? And rightly dividing the word. That's what I'm doing. I'm dividing the word of truth. I study them, I chew them, I memorize it, and I can tell somebody it. Amen. Amen. So you can never be. A man that God wants you to stand in the gap and you don't even, you can't open Genesis 24 14. You start from Revelation and open the Bible back us. No. Somebody who that God wants is somebody who can study God's way. My final point is this. The man God is looking for to stand in the gap is the one who has a message for the vital world of time. What message are you going to be? Oh! I'm a member of Pentecost, but don't you see I'm an elder? Come, come, come. That's the message they need to hear. No. They are wretched, they are broke. Give them a word of hope. Let your life be aware of the people outside and say, ah, this guy, no matter how mad the economic crunch is going on, he is still flourishing. Amen. For you don't know when he was I'm stressed. I'm stressed. You are stressed? The word is stressed, and you two are stressed. Eh? The word is in crisis. You two are in crisis. Let me tell you the secret here. Life without Christ is crisis. When I'm driving through to where I work, most of my colleagues driving in the street, their cars are parking in front of their houses. They are when I pass. I am on the road every day. I sit at 9 o'clock to 7 o'clock. Constant driving the whole day. What others are parked in their car, I'm still driving. Why? I'm not part of the crisis. Amen. I have a message for them. I tell them that the God I serve is a God of abundance. If I rely upon him, he always gives what I do. Yes. The question is, what message do you have for others? Your classmates, your colleagues, what message do you have for them? John 3 16, you really can't quote it. If someone is a good guy, the Lord's word, well, let us pray. Father, you know. Father, you know. <laughs> Father knows. What about you? So that's what God said. I sought for a man to stand in the gap, but I found none. All these six points I just mentioned, where do you fall short? Are you a student of the world? Are you the one that is always, I mean, closer to God, you have time for God? If not, begin to amend your ways. That God should not bypass you and take another place. No, it shouldn't. God said, or else I will destroy the whole land. So if one person can come in and intercede, it happened before. Someone was in the story, that's the message God gave me this morning. God was about to destroy Israel, the whole nation. It was Moses who stood in and stood in and intervened. And God spared them. It's likely God wants to do something in your family. But because of you, you will stop. Are you ready to be the man? Are you ready to be the woman? So either you were a woman or a man, you were a man. Esther was a woman. He stood in for the whole nation. Your family needs you. Your colleagues need you. 
your church here in DC. God will never bypass the man you live in this world. So even if you forget everything that God has told you today, don't forget this one thing. Without God, man cannot. And without man, God will not. May God bless all of you. Amen. Amen. We are going to pray for 10 minutes. In the uh, chorus, says, Please come and help me because my voice is very poor. My voice is poor.